Hey, this is Dr. Matt Najad, and in this video, I'm gonna be discussing how to use and maintain your custom whitening trays. Custom whitening trays are my favorite style of whitening because they're safe, they're effective, and if you follow these instructions, you can get the absolute best results without any long-term complications, including sensitivity. So my favorite gel for doing the custom whitening trays is the 10% carbamide peroxide, which is the safest, most well-researched, and it definitely is the most effective because you make up for the lower concentration by wearing them longer overnight and you have the least sensitivity. So I always recommend the 10% carbamide peroxide. And one of the most important things in custom whitening trays sounds simple, but it's the quality and the fit of your tray. And unfortunately, not all trays do this job adequately and the design matters a lot. So as you see here, I like to extend past the gum with the tray material so I get a real tight fit and a seal that prevents the tray from being too flimsy and also prevents saliva from getting in and diluting the gel, which is really important and the quality of that fit is what makes the custom whitening trays effective but if you have a poor quality fit it doesn't really matter because overnight you won't have the full duration of action. In terms of the gel application, it's very important that we use a very small amount. Now, when I make my trays, I don't leave a reservoir. So that means these trays have no space for the gel, which means that you only need a little bit and it'll definitely be pressed and compacted against the tooth. So I put just a little drop and I like to put it right at the gum line, if you notice that, because as you put it into your mouth, you'll spread it. And I'm only putting this gel on the outside surface of the teeth. We're not trying to whiten or um, the back surface. We're trying to go from the front through. That's how we get good results with the least amount of sensitivity. If you put it all over, you're gonna have a lot more gel wasted and a lot more sensitivity. So you see it doesn't take very much, but if your tray had a big pocket reservoir for this gel, you'd have to use more gel and the studies show that it makes no difference and you just waste more gel. Now, placing the tray in place is also very important. So you see, as we have this and we press it in, the gel will spread around and coat the whole facial or front surface of your teeth. And you'll get a little bit that'll squish out near the gum line due to this uh, tight fit and the way that I form the trays. Now you take a finger and you run it firmly against your gums to kind of get all that excess to squish out, but you don't want to try to lift up the tray or rinse with water. You just want to use your finger to rub any extra gel that is removed. That way you prevent moisture, water, or saliva from getting between the tray and diluting your gel. I recommend patients wear their whitening trays for two nights in a row with one night off. And I usually also recommend five to six hours of continuous wear time, preferably even seven or eight hours. What happens is the longer duration makes up for the lower concentration of the gel I recommend. But if you have sensitivity, you can adjust by wearing less time, or you can also do one night on, one night off, so that you're balancing the exposure time. If you're not sensitive, you can also do three nights on, one night off, and it's important to realize that wearing the tray for consecutive time and increasing the amount of exposure makes for faster results in a safe manner. In terms of cleaning your tray, what I usually recommend is two rounds of cleaning. So right when you take it off, don't rinse it. You don't wanna add any extra moisture or make the gel too slimy. But I take a Q-tip and I take it on the facial surface, which is the outside surface of each tooth. And I just try to remove as much of the remaining gel as possible. Um, very important not to use warm or hot water at this time because what will happen is your tray will, will lose its shape and it'll become flimsy and it might not fit the same way. So only use room temperature water, preferably stick with the Q-tip to remove most of it as I'm demonstrating. And then when you go back to use this again, you can do one more round of Q-tip and whatever has left behind and dried will be easier to remove at that time. In between uses, what I like to do is put the trays into a solution and drop in a cleaning tablet, which will disinfect and it also helps remove additional 
remaining gel and you can keep it just like this until the next time you're going to use it. I recommend doing this uh, at least every other time or so, if not every time you use the trace. Thank you.